Right. Inside the place. <laughs> Inside. Is that a scooter? Nah, it's just like on every UKG track, isn't it? <laughs> right, let's go. <gasps> Boop. Silence. Oh, oh, what's my voice is gone already? Oh, nice. what a start! Oh, good start. Soft H. <laughs> Hello. So yeah, welcome to another episode of Starter for Ten. We have no idea what episode it is, so we'll call it an episode. It's episode. 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 Did you ever watch episodes on TV? Uh, yeah, bits and bobs. It's the one with um, <laughs> Matt LeBlanc and. Yeah. The other bloke who I d- Always virulently dislike, though. You dislike him? Yeah. Oh, I think he's all right. Wasn't he in Alan Partridge? I don't know, maybe. Uh, Stephen... Uh, Mangan. Stephen... Stephen is Mangan. he Stephen Mangan? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Stephen Mangan. It is Stephen Mangan. Yeah, didn't it? And, yeah. um, and that woman as well, I forget her name, but she's, she's pretty good. It's a really good show. Stephen Mangan... Also was in Alan Partridge. Oh, he was? Yeah. He was Dan. Dan! Dan! Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good. Anyway. Right. Start for ten. Start now, ten. You, I guess you know what's going on here. I we think you get the idea by now. Pick a starter. And then it's unscripted chat. Starter for ten. <laughs> yes. Right. Chudley McIntosh. Go for a local news source. We haven't done last 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 week. We kind of we just took a topic. Yeah, we we'll went. Topic we'll revert time. back to. Yeah, we'll revert back to type. I like local stuff. Local's good because you get stupid things. So go for it. Got a good one on the North Devon Journal. <laughs> Devon man who swallowed live goldfish at the fair is banned from owning a goldfish. What? Yes. Banned by who? Uh, let me read the story. Um, that's, I love how that's my first question. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the authority. <coughs> who banned him? <laughs> a man who swallowed live goldfish at a fair, a Devon fair last year has been banned from owning a goldfish for the next five years. Good luck policing that one. Ale- uh, Alexander McKay of Erie Gardens, Pl- Plymouth, swallowed the goldfish whole to impress his mates after one of them won it at the fairground. What? A 21-year-old was captured on video dangling the clearly distressed fish above his mouth before dropping it in and swallowing it that's whole. horrible. Warning, this video may be distressing to some viewers. Well, that's the... You've got the video. Yeah, we do. Pull it in my hand. Pull it in my hand. Tell me when. When. Tell me when. Now. Oh, shit! Oh, oh. Oh, it's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> was, Did you just swallow it down? Right away down? Down the hatch. Why would you do that? The video posted by one of his friends on Facebook was later reported to the RSPCA who accused him of causing unnecessary suffering to the fish. What? <laughs> How much? Okay, here's, here begs That's, a question. That is a How much bit. is an acceptable level of suffering to cause Surely a goldfish? Surely the fish would hit his stomach and well, it wouldn't it would drown, die, would it? Die instantly. But it would still die pretty quick. It would die instantly. And the court heard that the 21-year-old who works as an engineer had drunk four or five cans of lager with his friends before heading to the fair. What a night. Hell. Um... <gasps> During a police interview, he said he was clearly drunk and he barely felt the fish in his mouth. He was really, he was really drunk. If you, if you can't feel what was in your mouth... Live fish flapping around. Yeah, but to be fair, it's not in his fish for long. Um, one of his mates suggested it, uh, but they bottled it. So he went in and did it. When asked if it was appropriate, he said no. <laughs> well, at least he's got the right answer there. Um... An, ex- an expert's report prepared <laughs> by a vet. Well, an, expert on, an expert on swallowing fish. Yep. Live. Said the fish would have died a painful death because of the high levels of acidity in the stomach. Okay, then. This begs the question. I have one word for you. I've got a name for the lady. I've got one word for the you. The lady, yep. Yeah. Oysters. Why? Well, are they still... Um... You, eat them, you eat them live, don't you? Yeah. This and is, you're supposed um... to just swallow them straight down. So surely, the, surely an oyster has feelings too. Yeah, would it, is an oyster? This is what I mean. Is it acceptable? Or is an oyster? No, is oyster, an oyster a crustacean? But is it an acceptable level of suffering to cause an oyster 
death while alive. Whereas a goldfish, he's like some higher power that needs more, <laughs> rip- more like coverage. I'm not sure. I don't know. That is a that is a Here, philosophical the, question. The experts the experts report said the fish should be handled carefully to protect trauma to the fins. <laughs> well, duh. You probably shouldn't handle it out of the water. <laughs> Um, there's a quote here that he said, I'm sorry. Whoa! Guess the fine. Two and a half grand. Oh, no, not, no we're not, not, we're not ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. £752. Oh, that's a lot of money. And they've banned him from owning a fish for the next five years, which, as we said, okay, so I'm not quite sure how you police that. If you catch a fish by line... Yep. How much pain and suffering does that fish go through while you're dragging it out of the water? I and think we just opened a can. Of, we've opened a can of worms here, literally, to catch the fish, and then hitting it over the head. And maybe you know, maybe if you miss, sort of, you don't get it cleanly the first time, <laughs> and you go in again the second time, and then you, then you <laughs> then you manage it. Surely that is just as bad as swallowing a fish whole. Live. Yeah, but if you keep net was a bowl of acid, oh, we couldn't be doing that. That's <laughs> could could not be doing that. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it's odd. That's that's extreme. That's a pretty that's a pretty good news story. Have you ever caught a fish? Have you ever been fishing? Um no. I've I never went, been fishing, um, not, not with a line. I went crabbing. I've been crabbing. I went crabbing with yeah. my sister when I was like I uh, twelve maybe? Um, yeah, about then. And uh we had a limpet on the end of the, the line. Like and I mean I was properly crabbing. Not these days when you see a kid there with a Half a on like a lobster pot hanging <laughs> off the end. I mean, I this had is a, like hook. a piece of string with a hook on the end. This was a piece of string with a hook and a weight. This yeah. was real crabbing yeah, where they worked with skill yeah. and luck. So yes, we put the um, put the limpet on there. You're not using bacon. That nah, was like the classic, wasn't it? Well, I was purist. Seems I was like a waste of using, bacon to me. I was only using ingredients I could source at the seaside. Good thinking. So um, cuttlefish. Smashed it off. Guy. Smashed it off the rock with a with a rock. Yep. And then, uh, Did you cause off. unnecessary harm to the limpet? <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't know. <gasps> Is smashing it off with a giant piece of slate, digging it out of its shell with a metal spike, is that unnecessary harm? I don't know. Anyway, Again, yeah. chucked it in a, uh, a rock pool. And then um, as it goes in the rock pool, a fish comes over, bites it, and it properly goes through the fish's face. Like, properly caught hook, line, and sinker. And I was a bit weirded out by this. So was my sister. We didn't really like the fish flapping around. It was a bit, it was quite big. I mean, it was the size of an adult hand. So it was quite a big fish to catch in a... That's quite a big fish on a... Yeah, on a, on a, on a tiny a... spike. It was really distressed. And this unsympathetic gentleman came to us and said, Well, you shouldn't be, shouldn't be scared if you didn't want to bloody catch it. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Great thing to say yeah. to kids. Well done, well, that man. to be man. fair... We didn't go out with the intention to catch the fish. No, you wanted crabs. Yeah, exactly. First <laughs> time anyone's ever said that. <laughs> oh, classic. Um, uh, yeah. So, yeah, and this bloke had to come and get this off the fish's face. Did he get a rock and smash it over the head, or did he release it? Nah, that'd be too much suffering. You released it. We kept it in a bucket for a bit and then put it away. Was it, Did it calm down once you got the hook out of his face? Uh, no. It so, surely you're better off hitting it over the head in that case. A straight ten. It was mad. Poor fish. And I don't. It'd we'll be dead now. I don't know how I feel about. I don't know. Would it be dead? I What's imagine the life it would be dead. Of a fish. Don't know. Not that long, surely. Interesting one in life expectancies I saw this week. Lobsters. Yeah, they're immortal. Yeah, they don't have a life. They don't have a time. No. So a jellyfish. Yeah. Did we cover this before? Or is this day job? I, I don't know. Oh, sorry. Apologies if we covered that before. Otherwise, of course, it's going to come around again. Yeah, it's it, it's pretty mad. Yeah, I just find that interesting. But how come when their cells replace, that they obviously because like your body mm. is replaced, your body is only ever it's ten years. I think your every I think it takes ten years for every cell in your body to be replaced. But different organs refresh at different times. Yeah, of course, and so multiple you, times. So skin a goes round like way quicker than yeah, skin. Yeah, skin's meant to be. You lose your skin, liver, for you? example. You lose mm. skin. I think your skin is only. It's a short it's period like of days. time. It's like days. It's like a few weeks before it gets yeah, refreshed. Yeah. I think it's bones that take the longest. Yeah. But but yeah, what's weird to think is like your, I don't know, your your skull mm. is only ever 10 years old. Maximum. But how come... Weird. Do the... 
But then how does ageing even happen then? Well, this is the question. Because if it's refreshing, only 10 years this old, is the question. how can you have somebody who's 80, 80 years old with decrepit, crumbling bones? Because surely the thing, they're replacing. But are they replacing with the same changes and, and mutations? So I if I... Uh, for example, I slipped my pedal on my bike and shinned myself so hard. Oh. My shin Ooh. is bumpy. It's it's covered in bumps Permanently and bumps. Bumpy. It's bum- mm. Yeah, it's all well, like the ones where you don't really know how you didn't break your leg. Yeah. But so when my bone is replacing, mm. is it replacing the same lumps and bumps? Is it replacing like with like literally to what be. is there right yeah, now? Yeah, surely it must be. That's bizarre. So Weird, is it, it is it like making a? On a cellular level, are those impacts making a change, do you reckon? Uh, probably on a cellular level, not a genetic level. I don't think, like, bumping your knee changes your genes. But then viruses Although you'd probably need stuff. to change your genes after you'd skinned them through your... Oh, that's just a... That's an awful dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's bad. That's yeah. two strikes now. <laughs> two strikes. <laughs> One more on your end. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I don't think I it know. changes genes. I don't know. I don't know. We need if anybody that is listening to this did biology at university, specifically probably human biology. Please tweet us and level. answer us or email us with an answer, and we'll give you a shout out. This seems yeah, but I it, if I someone find can that explain bizarre. that to us, then serious kudos. Because I've done I've done quite a lot of reading into things like this about drug delivery and uh, how that things, stuff's crazy. Interesting. Yeah, and how they're trying to effectively modify people's genes. Yeah. And the best way of modifying genes is with the best thing on earth that we have of modifying genes is scissors in a sewing machine. Yes. Or the flu in it is like basically oh, that really? modifies your genes. Oh yeah, well, yeah. So but it obviously only does it it changes your genes really quickly. A whole mass effect does it across. Yeah. But your body catches on and within 5 days it will be immune to it. So you couldn't keep delivering mm your genetic change the same way you'd have to carry on having millions of an impossible amount of combinations to keep having to keep making the same genetic yeah, change. Yeah, immunity is something exactly. slightly different anyway. But they believe that they've managed to develop a virus, for example, that, that your can body change. can't... Uh, so it changes your DNA? Yeah, really? so it changes, on your, it changes the DNA, so it makes a genetic change to you without it... Adju- without it be your body being able to adapt to then kill it off. But in the wrong hands, that really scares me. Yeah, that is terrifying. I find that more surely, alarming. Surely AIDS does that. Yeah, but we don't know how it... The problem is, yes, there are things that are like that. Viruses that we can't get rid mm. of. And the body can't adjust to. But if we knew how they were made, we'd be able to cure them. Yeah. It's I think the, the confusing thing is... This is we're not going to get too technical is you just you have your dna Sorry, you've already got too technical you have dna but there are also other forms of um nucleic acids because dna is wow you really acid. did go deep here. But you have different types of um nucleic acids you have um my apologies you would love the fact that i can still remember this you have mrna don't you yep um and i think you have rna as well i think rna is another one um and i think that immunity is to do with something else not dna i think I think, I think, yeah, but but it's it's like little pieces of code that stay within you rather than actually modifying the DNA that makes you you. But then doesn't different parts of your body have slightly different DNA depending on... I believe so, yeah. Strings of DNA. And I think, and obviously as I think we've kind of answered our own question almost slightly, your DNA seems to change through almost... Um, world events so for example the fact it's replicating yeah. if you've got a if you Maybe break your arm and it's a bent does leg have an effect. nature seems to replace but then you it can but then leg. you can unbend it you can break it and fix it and then set it and it'll your body will set it back to normal again yeah so it just keeps it basically repli- it clones what's there in that exact form right okay we need someone to tweet us who knows about this stuff who did biology or something tweet us and we'll get you on Either by phone or in person. Yeah. And we can ask you these questions and we can deal with this stuff. And then we can educate the masses. Yeah, that was... It's, yeah. It's incredibly interesting, though. But it's, I think it just... It starts to show... I Yeah, once again, I've had personal experience of immunity and um, immunologists, doctors, immunology and stuff. And the, the letters... For example, you go to see the bloke. 
he talks to you and you just nod and smile because what everything he's saying just makes no sense to you. They send home a letter of what, what he went through and you look at it and it is like somebody's just swallowed the dictionary. Or it's just yeah. sequence of codes and letters. It's yeah. beyond anything. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is truly amazing. I never, I never, I was, I was good at mem- remembering certain like long words, but there was only so many my brain could hold, and that's that was the limit of my biology and science. Well, so you think the th- your limitation, the limiting factor of your intelligence is your inability to hold <laughs> well, a it's, large it's, number of long words. Well, <laughs> no, it's inability to hold a certain av- amount of information about a topic. So I'll know a little bit about a topic. But then my mind doesn't let me store anymore. That makes you great for this which is, podcast. Which is why I know so many little things about such a broad <laughs> amount of things. Like d- what DNA stands for. But you should really know that. Why? But that's something, that we learn, on me. that's something we learn as kids. Yeah, but we, we learn a lot of stuff as kids, kids that you don't remember. True. Okay, I did say it earlier, but I, don't know, I can't really tell people to tweet it to us because they'll just Google it, wouldn't they? That's... It's going to say tweet us with what DNA stands for, but everyone's going to be just like, Google it. I'm not fussed. Yeah, I could Google it as well, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> what bad things to Google? No, I, I miss learning. I, th- I think I feel I turned a yeah. corner mm. when when all of a sudden when you didn't have to learn yeah. and you, you left have a school, sudden, you have a all of a sudden, knowledge. yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, I know what you mean. really got into my stride and could see myself being good at it. Mm. Once the pressure, once you weren't forced into a situation every day where you had to learn and learn lots of different stuff as well, mm. when you could, when suddenly information was available to you by your on your terms, suddenly you just want to know loads of stuff. But all the useless junk that I know that comes up on this podcast for example yeah <coughs> my stupid things i talk about down the pub and all those things that's all knowledge that i've read myself yeah me too it's not well, it's some nobody's of it's in school but yeah, not a lot of it and very nobody's ever told me these things and it's no, all stuff that i've gone out and looked for and found the internet, interesting though, and really mm. gives us that yeah i i felt maybe i should i tried for a while to try and acquire knowledge through other Things other than the internet and the telly and whatever. And it's just very hard nowadays. It is. Sometimes you can't beat a book, though. Sometimes books are amazing. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So good. But from ease of use... more physical, like... I know that sounds Mm. really weird, but it is. It's because, for example, I have a book, right, that has trees in it, right? Different kinds of trees. Sounds like a thriller. Yeah, it is. Um, But... Say, for example, you want to know what a type of tree is. You can't Google it. You can't Google it. Well, yeah, what's your search what, term what for tree, that? What you know, tree am I looking at? But if you've got a book, you look at the different types, you look at maybe how tall it is or however the book categorises it, and you can find really quite easily, probably within a couple of minutes, what kind of tree it is. So for reference... That yeah, for reference, is... I don't think you can beat books. Although image scanning is getting pretty sweet now, where you can take a photo or something and... Google search with it and it it's will tell you what really it is. It's really good for cheating at the pub quiz. It it's is. true, actually. It is. I never considered that because I wouldn't cheat at a pub quiz. We don't cheat either. No. I don't no. think anybody does. I think it's something that's just not done. Not that quiz we go to. Flippin' Egg is military. <laughs> it's it's, uh, he's like he Hawkeyes. Yeah, the, the quiz master is militant. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and he, he gets is. things wrong, which is irritating. Yeah, and yeah. That's he, the most irritating thing. He actually, do you know what? I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like the guy. <laughs> he's a really broad No, statement. I don't. I don't. I think he's a bit of an idiot. Really? Mm-hmm. I don't think he's an idiot. I think he... A lot of people... Pro- it's the same reason why probably a lot of people probably think the same thing about me. Just don't like the guy. It's acceptable. Do you reckon? Yeah. Maybe the same as me. Mm. I think a lot of people have said that to themselves in the past. Yeah, but... He is an idiot. <laughs> what, the quiz master? No, like me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or like, you know... Do we get, everybody feels like that about themselves? Is this just nagging Surely, self-doubt? Yeah. Well, you're either you either think that about yourself, or you think you're the bee's knees, and both That's both worse. is wrong. You, you but don't that is worse. Be a Kanye. No, you do not want to be a Kanye. <laughs> like, whoa, whoa! No, you don't. Being ex- that guy is um, <laughs> he's one of a kind. Isn't oh, he? he gave a, he had another great interview with Ellen. Oh yeah, Ellen mm. this week. Or I love the, Ellen. She's yeah, great. and he had some classic Kanyeisms. Then he tried to explain to himself. Tried to. Well, it almost feels like he's explaining, he's justifying everything to himself. Yeah, I know as what opposed mean. to, I like him though. Yeah, there's I... something about him. I know he's a dick, and I know that he does really stupid and says such stupid stuff. But 
for some reason, I really like him. I think the conclusion I've sort of come to, I, I watched a, he did a really good, he did two interviews with Zane Lowe when he was back on Radio 1 still. And yeah. he interviewed him and he just talked about whatever he wanted for like an hour at a time. Yeah. So like a long, that form, was great. really good interview. And he's an interesting guy and all he wants to do is improve the world and help yeah. people. Yeah. But his way of, of getting there is a bit... The way that he thinks is mm. the best way of doing that is just... Did you know he's fluent bizarre. Chinese? That wouldn't surprise me. He lived in China till he was like 12, I think. Um, he moved over there with his mother and then um, was thrown into school at like two and learned Chinese. And is fluent Chinese. Oh, I know or Mandarin a, for anyone out there who's going to be picky about it. There's a good one about the reason why he doesn't smile. Oh, yeah? Can he not? <laughs> no, it's nothing to do with that. In the old oil paintings that you see everywhere in castles and everything, royalty yeah. never smile. All right. And he views himself on that well, Yeah, because level. nobody can... But yeah, but the only reason for that is because you can't hold a smile for like <laughs> for three 12 hours while your picture's being painted. <laughs> it, it, was be the same, forced, it, it was the same in old-fashioned photographs. That's why fashion, old-fashioned photographs, people don't have their, aren't smiling because the camera was so, just so long exposure and they had to stand so still <laughs> that if they smiled, they'd have just <laughs> broken their face. How long was a typical <laughs> exposure? They were long, I think. They were like fifteen, tw- like twenty minutes or something. They were re- really. They were they were really long, yeah. And imagine having to stand. It was in a film, wasn't imagine it? Imagine having was to in... stand statue still for twenty. It minutes. was in a um, uh, hundred million <laughs> or a million ways to die in the West or whatever the Seth mm. MacFarlane film. Yeah. Yeah, you had to you had to wait really really long. A really but it's a long miracle time. we actually even have any photos from that period at all. Yeah, the, what, like the With late eighteen hundreds. Yeah, from the technical side of things, and also yeah, the practicality of having to stand statue still yeah. for 20 seconds. I know. 20 minutes, sorry. Mm. For 20 seconds I think, would be hard I think, Yeah, 20 seconds would be hard. Yeah. I think it was about 20 minutes. It's, I, I don't know, I'd say well, it was more that sort of like, range. Um, explosive flash bulbs and stuff to try. Yeah, and like one one flash and it explodes mm. it, gone. And you had to reload a bulb to take yeah, another photograph. Yeah, but the reason why they were doing that is they were trying to generate so much light to yeah, try and expose that's, that's the, exactly the photo right. quickly. That's exactly why. But yeah, so you have your photo taken it would blow your eyes off <laughs> while you have your it would yeah, yeah. blind you <laughs> and now you just pull out your phone and you press a button and you take Got a, a good one i did nearly for a while think i thought i was going blind i was at a scout jamboree and it was like some famous one i could could have worked out the year it was Maybe 100 the, years 100 no it was a 25th world jamboree or something at scout yeah it was 100 years and they so gave us um, years, yeah they gave us digital no instant cameras oh yeah and we were stood in this queue for ages, and we hadn't taken any photos on the instant cameras for our for, and we were like, oh, no, we better film. And I was messing around, and I wound it on and put it round the wrong way and went to take a photo of my eye. <laughs> but all it did is it let the flash off in the other eye, right? I let the flash off. Um... All my vision went yellow. It was like something, I was like I was looking through stained those, glass. Those flashes were really strong. Yeah, and... I was for about... But also, they, they're really hot, so when mm, you let them off, hot, if you yeah. touch them... They are hot. But I was quite alarmed for about 20 minutes when I thought I'd damaged my <laughs> sight permanently. <laughs> was another That's interesting really one with instant... Nothing I'm going to condone here. Don't do this. Not a good idea at all. The trans... Um, trans no, not the transponder, not transducer. I can't remember the way... The flash works. It stores up the power. Ah. <sighs> Capacitor. If you take the battery and the capacitor out of a instant camera, you have yourself already made taser. Yes. Yes. A stun You're gun. You're right. It, it's bad. That, I mean, you'll be arrested for using it as a for carrying one as it's a, a assault weapon. Handy to know though for a zombie apocalypse. What you're going to let them get that close? No, well, not for zombies. For humans. I mean, seriously, if you watch The Walking Dead. No, I haven't. Ah, see. The point is that it's uh, at the end of the day, it's not the zombies that you need to watch out for, it's other humans. I watched a bizarre film about a nuclear attack on Sheffield from 1984, and it, it plays out like the 10 years after that what, and what they perceived would have okay, happened. Yeah, yeah. And it goes through like months of what happened and then uh, a bit longer. And then into 10, 10 years after, it, it foresees that we'd live in a like a law, it's still the, the world still, the UK still hasn't recovered. And we're still in like a weird 
military old, run. No, not military, like farming. And everybody. Oh, right, it just goes back everybody to. Everybody actually stops using language. And it, that was where it became odd. It, everybody became like a source of like grunts and were fighting and really? hostile to each other for food. And it was just, it became like caveman esque. Really? If you want to watch Regressed. it, it was truly bizarre. It was a film called Threads. You can find it on Vimeo. It was originally made from, for BBC. And they showed it at the time when the Cold War was still a very mm. real possibility. And it, it got to the point where somebody could have just blown up any of the countries. The BBC showed this film and it disturbed so many people. They never showed it again. It was banned from broadcast on the BBC. But mm. I think that's why I watched it. I thought it'd be interesting. But it was honestly bizarre. And it was quite alarming. And there was some... It's a horror film. And there was... Uh, it's a horror thriller. Weird. Thriller. It made me think. And it was very odd. I watched it on a Sunday afternoon. Bizarre. That's a brave time to watch a thriller. Well, It'll screw you for the rest of the day. You'd spend the whole night just like wondering what the yeah. I feel like there's a safety the net of watching scary films or horror films when it's light outside. No, I don't like it. It's weird. It's got to be dark to watch a horror. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. But I felt it was a safety net. So if I knew it, because I didn't really know. What yeah, I was but looking. then it starts getting dark, and then you start getting creeped out. Well, all I'd le- all I'd heard about this film that it was so disturbing that it was banned from broadcast. <laughs> so I was expecting it to be absolutely <laughs> horrendous. So there, I went in. I needed all the all the help I could get. <laughs> but uh, Amazing. yeah, I haven't. I don't watch that many thrillers. Uh, well, I watch thrillers. I don't watch that many horrors. I I do and I don't. I go through phases of binging on stuff. I like thrillers. I think I, I get more involved in a thriller than a horror. Horrors are good, but they I just find them. I get to a point where they're just ridiculous, and I don't. I don't get scared I just get irritated yeah it doesn't tick your boxes you know when um, when there's a woman well, I say woman but it could be a bloke who's standing there like ah, ah as this like you know murderer comes at them with a knife or something or a sword and they're walking to them it, really it. slowly and they're like ah because they're trapped because there's a fence behind them or something they can't mm. run anymore it's like I'm sorry that is not how you would react in real life in real life you would go absolutely mental mm. because you would you would fight and also there's well the way that, that it, horror films have gone now is that they're not so much that because we don't find that scary i mean look back at the original james bonds when there was the the dragon tank that protected the island and it didn't have any weapons the way it protected the island was because the people were scared of the dragon yeah and at the time that was a that was a realistic that was possibility that was that was scary in the film so whereas now we've gone through saw we've gone through things well, now it's that all are, mind games isn't exactly. it exactly so now yeah. we have films that are genuinely Get designed into, to get into your get head. Get into your head. Yeah. Or the the jumpy films. Yeah. Or extreme, unbelievable gore. Yeah, gore doesn't... I don't I'm really... Not, I'm not... Yeah, that doesn't, doesn't take my me. boxes. I, that's why I think I prefer thrillers, because they've got more depth to them. Mm. They're more... You sort of... You're on the you're, you're on your edge of your seat, and sometimes they're a bit spooky. Spooky thrillers are great, because mm. you're on the edge of your seat wondering what's going on, what's happening, trying to work out what, you know, what the big sort of reveal will be, and... What the issue is. I don't like those the, a, a jumpy film. I went to the cinema and watched a jumpy film, and the actual the, it was more scary before the film started. The anxiety of knowing how jumpy <laughs> was, was going it? to be. Uh, was it Scooby Doo? No, Monsters it, Unleashed. It wasn't Monsters Unleashed, but I, that did really scare me. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe it Insidious. No, I can't remember. Good one, Insidious. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. It wasn't... Um, I think we're up to like Insidious 3 now, aren't we? I think it may have been Insidious. Yeah, it was dire. It didn't tick my boxes at all. It was felt like a horrible horror film. Well, if you're, if you're prepared to commit the time to watch a horror film, I advise you not to. And I advise you to go and watch a thriller instead because I yeah, can guarantee you will enjoy it more. Hmm. Go and watch um, uh, Devil's Advocate. Now, that is a really, really good thriller. With Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino. Yeah, I'm, I believe it is even amazing. Even after that, I tend to go. I'd rather watch some documentary, but I think that says a lot about me. It says a lot about my tastes, yeah. and that's not to everybody's. It's true. But everybody has slightly different. That's what's so amazing about film, and that's why we have so much variety. And not everybody drinks the same kind of tea. No, it's true. So it's fine mm. that we can have such a v- exactly. wide variety. Have whatever you want. But there are still films that are wrong. There are. For example, like did you when that bloke. It was trying to justify this screening of the anti-vax film at the Cannes Film Festival. Was it De Niro? Anti-vax. Yeah, you know the the whole movement who say that vaccinations cause autism. Oh, and is that... De Niro pro anti? 
which sounds stupid. Uh, yeah. So he's for yeah. against it. Yeah, he against. was the Tribeca Film Festival, and oh, Tribeca. he was basically standing by and allowing them to screen this film. Yeah. He's, he's, he, his stance on it was, I'm not anti-vaccine, I want safe vaccines, which is outrageous because there's nothing, there's scientifically, if you go pure on an evidence basis anyway, there's nothing wrong with current vaccines. It's, there's very little, unless you're allergic to the ingredients, there's nothing wrong with vaccines. But 95% of the rest of the world didn't like the fact that he was giving a mouthpiece yeah. to that film that was of such a controversial subject. Yeah, I don't think that that was the best a good move for him, really. I don't think that they shouldn't show it because it's controversial. I, I disagree with that. You sh- if anything, because it's controversial, it should be shown. And if people don't want to go and watch it, don't go and watch Draw it. Draw the line here, though. You make a Holocaust denial film, and then why should that be given a... Why should that but be given if, a... if, a, I'm, a, if I air? make a film that has genuine factual evidence and genuinely puts a point across that people might not have seen before, I think it has a right to be shown. Because it's all if as long as it's not just complete bullshit. If if there's actually genuine reason behind I it, think then you know, surely it's just giving people the full picture. Otherwise, we're living in a a controlled state where people only get a certain amount of information, mm. and that's wrong. The, the 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 problem is with these with all those films that come across as contentious are that they only they're very one eyed on their side of the story. That's true. You need to balance it, don't it's you? It's very. It's very rare that you're going to find a controversial film that's balanced because if it was balanced, it, it wouldn't, wouldn't be, be controversial. controversial. It's true. So there you go. There's the, there is, therein I, lies. Therein the lies lesson. your problem. Filmmakers, it's, make sure that your controversial films are balanced. But and also, does anybody really go out there with the intent to go and make something uh, purely just controversial straight out? Don't know. Like, who's do? You, do you sit down with your brief and be like? Do you know what? This year, I think I'm just going to make something that really just, r- just pisses ruffles everyone feathers. off. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make a name for myself. I just make. I don't even believe in it myself. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, make that's a name stupid. for it by just. Yeah. Yeah. That, do you know what? Uh, alarmingly, there probably have been. There will be people like that. Yeah. Yes. Jesus, that was a journey. So it was a journey from a uh, Devonian man swallowing a live goldfish through the ethics. Well, he, well he's of, from Plymouth, wasn't he? Yeah. Oh, that's a dodgy ground. We won't cover that. Um, <laughs> he actually swallowed the the, uh, the fish in Tavistock, which is in Devon. So yeah, okay, fine. Um, we've gone from a man swallowing a goldfish, <laughs> covered to controversial film. What? And we Stopping we kind of that. crossed on the way. What is the acceptable amount of suffering to cause an animal? <laughs> <laughs> and who decides that? <laughs> I still want to know who the local authority was that gave him this fine. And we went incredibly in depth onto science. <laughs> we went way, way <laughs> deep where George flexed his biological muscles. Yeah, it's all going to come back to me tonight. So, yeah, if you have it. anything to add to the conversation, please tweet us at Starter for 10 Pod. We will reply. Where you know where we are, you know where to find us. If you don't like what you're currently listening, listen somewhere else. Yeah. So yeah, here we go. Great. That's, that's a lot. Cheers, guys. Catch you again soon. Cheers, then.